welcome to Pratt's Woodworking. In this video, I'll be showing you a bit of an update on my shop and as well as myself. First off, I'll be doing a little bit of an update on myself. I kind of sprained my middle finger like in the first, in between the first and second knuckle. And I won't be able to do much as well uh, with movement. I'll be showing you a little bit of an update on my shop itself. And I've kind of moved locations from my basement out to my garage. Let's start with a brief overview of this garage. It is a 20 by 24 garage with two single doors that are too small to even fit our cars. And a lot of it, this garage is filled with crap and other supplies for doing renovations inside. This is probably going to be the only project I'll be working on for the next month or so. And that is because it is a large space to work on. I have to get all my tools out and my wall of tools put back in. I have to build some workbenches and insulate a good part of this garage. I do have a little bit of heat, but in the winters, when it gets to minus 40 uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit, that's the same, it's not fun. All right, let's start with just the main outside. Main entrance, I've got two single doors, and the far one over there is broken. That's one of the springs broke. And as we walk in, I have my main light stand and some my bike or bikes, a lot of drywall and some lumber back there, and a big wall of just storage of crap. And as we walk in, I have a large shelf that's mostly tools and hardware, including a small engine down there for a snowblower. I go side, I have all the, I have all our standard hand tools, like anywhere from sockets to wrenches and hammers. Under there, I have a kerosene heater, as well as a fully functioning snowblower and a part of a snowblower that, I, that we're giving to my grandpa. As I come along, I have my scroll saw, bench grinder, lathe, drill press, and all that, plus chop saw, sander, and then... But if you look in the back here, I have some ins styrofoam insulation that I'm working on putting on through the entire area all through here. But as I work on this, it's a little difficult with my sprained finger. So that's a bit of a setback, but I will be adding in electrical boxes every four feet as well as a couple lights up above. I'm going to be building some larger workbenches, not quite as high as these, out of teak uh, 4x4s that we got from a rail yard, as well as some old doors. Right behind these cabinets are some boxes and stuff, but I have some wood storage there, what I can use and do whatever I want with. I have a router down there, as well as some cabinets here that we'll be, be, we'll be putting up in place of the shelves that are above the main workbench at the moment, and we'll be putting proper shelving there. Once I finish insulating this entire corner here, I will be running electrical, like as I said, but then I will be paneling all of this with quarter inch hardboard and quarter inch, um, I got almost a hardboard paneling. All right, under all those sheets of plywood and stuff and beside the cabinets is my POC table saw that is by Skill. I recently found the guard and was able to put it on, but the adjustment screw has stripped out and so I have to shim it. But the only really actually nice thing about this, the fence is kind of crappy, but is the miter saw, believe it or not or the miter uh, gauge. It's really nice and bulky and sturdy. That's the only good thing about this saw. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Pratt's Woodworking. If you like this, please like it, comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future.